I sent my boyfriend pictures of this dog and said, this is my dream dog because I only like small, ugly dogs. And he said, and I quote, hell no, if you get a dog like that, we break up. I didn't appreciate it then, and I don't, I don't appreciate it now. Laura Ingram had the most hilarious pop culture fail on her show the other night that I'm still laughing about. Rumor has it President Trump would fire anyone on his staff who played this artist in the White House. Would you be okay with going to Chuck E. Cheese on a date? Do you know the Chuck E. Cheese conspiracy theory? Do you know the Olive Garden conspiracy theory? You're about to learn, and it's Thursday, which means a brand new pop culture rewind. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Poplitics. One of the funniest moments ever happened on Laura Ingram's show this week, and it was totally by accident. You know Raymond Arroyo? He always goes on Laura's show to break down what's happening in pop culture for her. Not to be a hater, but I think we all know that should be me. Just kidding, I do love Raymond. Anyways, he was trying to talk to her about the show You on Netflix, and look what happened. You know, I was watching an episode of uh, You where measles came up. Wait, 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 when did I mention measles? I don't know, it was on You. Wait, what? What, what, what was on me? What are you talking about? Ray, what, the, is Raymond the even hearing what I'm saying? I never had the measles. What's on you? We never did a, a we never did a measles and vaccine episode. Am I? Is this a joke? I, know, I don't even know it, what you're talking about. It was on you. It was on you. I've never had Raymond. I've never had measles. What are you talking about? This is stupid. It was an episode of a show, Laura. Well, what's it called? You, what is you, it's called you. I've never done a show on measles. I, I just completely give up. We gotta get it's out It's a this. show I, I give up. called you on Netflix. There's a show called Loring on Netflix. What are you never talking mind. about? I'm moving on to Adele. I can't explain this to What's you. The pop about? singer had an open- He got mad, which made it even funnier. I don't know how he wasn't crying laughing. I would have had tears streaming down my face. Also, that entire scenario is like the modern day Abbott and Costello who's on first bit. After all, a man earns it. Who does? Absolutely. Well, all I'm trying to find out is what's the guy's name on first base? Oh, no, no, what is on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? That's what I'm trying to find out. Well, don't change the players. I'm not changing nobody. Take it easy. What's the guy's name on first base? What's the guy's name on second base? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? A former aide for the Trump administration told the Washington Post that she was told not to play Taylor Swift in the White House unless she wanted to be fired. You're fired. This was after Taylor's public bashing of the president. The aide's name is Olivia Troy, and she worked as an advisor to Vice President Mike Pence. Anyway, she says she lost an argument one day at work and was angry, so she decided to take refuge in her office and let off some steam by turning Taylor Swift up full volume. She claims that another colleague then knocked on her door and was like, um, I don't think she likes the president very much. I'd watch your back playing that if I were you. Do I think the president would have been unhappy if he heard staffers blasting Taylor Swift in the White House? Yes, I do. Because loyalty is very important to him and I think he would see that as unloyal. Do I also think that this Olivia chick is exaggerating to try to make the president look bad? Yes, also that. Because uh, after she was eventually fired for something else, she started a whole anti-Trump movement and even endorsed President Joe Biden. So I take this story with a grain of salt. I just wanted to listen to Taylor Swift alone. Shia LaBeouf took a girl on a date to Chuck E. Cheese. I asked the public staff if they would like to go there on a date they all said no i said yes first red flag Whoa. then one of them tried to tell me there is a chuck e cheese conspiracy theory about the pizza the rumor is that they don't make enough money anymore to make fresh pizza every day so they take the uneaten pieces from people's tables and redistribute them the evidence employees taking pictures of the pizzas in the kitchen and none of the pieces fitting together correctly it's like a hodgepodge I've had over 40 pizzas in the last 30 days. It gets cheesier, I mean juicier. Then I was told that Chuck E. Cheese isn't the only restaurant to have a conspiracy theory. Olive Garden has a similar one where the breadsticks are reused for other customers if they're not all eaten. And you know what? I 100% believe this because those breadsticks are way overhyped. I have never understood why people are so obsessed with Olive Garden breadsticks. They have absolutely no flavor. Domino's breadsticks are the superior breadsticks. At least they have garlic butter on them. Just get the butter nice and open. Pick your stick. 
Right. You get first pick. It's your first time here. That's your, that's your stick. Wow. What you're going to want to do is take a bite. <laughs> okay. Okay? That's it. Suck it up. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the best thing you've ever had, but now, take your butter knife. Cut about Sliver. two millimeters of butter. Just put it on. Wow. Cheers. Nice cheers, buddy. We're getting a tell-all interview with Oprah and Britney Spears, y'all! Britney announced it on Instagram. She answered some questions in a video about her conservatorship ending, and in the caption she said, I might as well do a hint of my thoughts on the gram before I go set things square on Oprah. <laughs> so I'm just grateful, honestly, for each day and being able to have um, the keys to my car and being able to be independent and feel like a woman and um, owning an ATM card, seeing cash for the first time, being able to buy candles. It's the little things for us women, but it makes a huge difference. And um, I'm grateful for that, you know, it's nice. It's really nice. Should she do an interview with Oprah or do an interview with Drew Barrymore or Kelly Clarkson? The girl's got more than a decade's worth of her own flavor conservative to spill, so she should just, you know, make the rounds on all the interviews, I think. Also, I feel like these Oprah tell-alls are just getting better ever since the Green Bean episode. We just got Adele, and now we get Brit. Cannot wait to watch. Oh, baby, baby. Ready to take a step back in time? Here's what happened this week in pop culture history with the Pop Culture Rewind. In 1980 this week, model Brooke Shields was only 15 when she was caught in the middle of a media firestorm. What did she do? She filmed the Calvin Klein commercial where she said, you wanna know what comes in between me and my Calvins? Nothing. This caused an absolute uproar after critics deemed it sexually suggestive, which resulted in the commercial being banned entirely on CBS and even in some countries, which I don't really get. If she's saying nothing comes between her and her Calvins, isn't she saying she's not having sex? You want to know what comes between me and my Calvins? Nothing. Calvin Klein G. <laughs> All right, it's 1982 again. Drew Barrymore at age seven this week hosted Saturday Night Live. She was starring in the hit film E.T. at the time. And I'm not a huge Drew Barrymore fan now. Not that I have a problem with her. I'm just kind of indifferent. But I love reading about Drew Barrymore, the child star. An OG cute serve it as we'll remember that a few years ago, I read the memoir she wrote at 14 when she got out of rehab. It took me forever to find that online. All right, are you ever going to get married? Steven. Stephen who? Spielberg. Oh, man. This week in 1985, Sesame Street's Elmo was introduced. He was usually puppeteered by Kevin Clash, but in 2012, that ended when the Kevin guy was accused by multiple men of having sexual relationships with them as young boys. When the allegations went public, Kevin Clash came out as gay. They, they think that, you know, I'm, I'm, they, they expect me to be a little short, yeah. bald-headed guy with glasses. Yeah. yeah. With that, that... Talks like this? Yes. Yeah, but no. No. This week in 1993, Britney Spears, Justin Timberlake, and Christina Aguilera joined the cast of the new Mickey Mouse Club. Safe to say, their lives were never the same. Justin. Carrie. JC. Britney. Josh. Rona. TJ. Alana. Ricky. Christina. Martin. Then in 2003, Michael Jackson was booked on suspicion of multiple counts of child molestation and later acquitted on all charges. He was on $3 million bond. And then, do you remember this? In 2006, this week, Nintendo released the Wii in the US. And that's what happened this week in pop culture history. Some of you have guessed correctly who the spillover guest is going to be tonight at midnight Eastern and 9 p.m. Pacific. Not all of you may agree with this guest, but that's okay. I want to hear why you disagree in your five-star reviews, if you do, or why you agree. Subscribe to The Spillover on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. There is a heart on this episode. Tap that. Do you believe the Chuck E. Cheese or Olive Garden conspiracy theories? What about that chick story about not being able to play Taylor Swift in the White House under President Trump? Tell me your thoughts. Then, D 
DM this episode to a friend who is obsessed with Olive Garden, see if they've heard this conspiracy theory, and finally, share this episode to your stories and hit that save button. Oh, by the way, is that dog that I like cute or what? We're back tomorrow at 4 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific. It's pop culture without the propaganda every single day. I'm Alex Clark, and this is Poplitics. Support Poplitics, the first ever conservative pop culture daily show by subscribing to our channel, turning on notifications, and of course, hitting the thumbs up. Also, our main home is on Instagram, seriously, just trust me, that's when the real magic happens. Follow us there, at Poplitics.